people. Welcome back for another Human Design and Marketing Live. Claire should be joining me here in a few minutes. If you haven't heard, Claire and I are launching a second cohort of our Human Design and Marketing program. Here she is right now. Design, if you know it below. And we will be happy to give you like a quick little analysis, give you some feedback on some of the clients that we have in our cohort. Hey, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Good. Everything's good over here. I'm like excited for our live. It's been a little bit of a crazy day, but we made it. Yep. So I know I'm both like, we just got off calls. Let's jump on. <laughs> it's perfect. Sometimes a back to back is like almost better because it keeps the energy going, you know? That's how I feel too. All of my calls today were three back to back. And I'm like, that actually is preferable. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes for a know how to design our schedules to work with our energetics though so. that's not exactly for everyone if you're listening like that's not me that very well might not be you yes right and that's what we'll discuss inside our cohort and i was just sharing with the two that have joined us hi welcome please feel free to leave your human design below um, and Claire and I are just going to kind of talk more about our program. And actually next week we will be doing like a series of content around this program and direct feedback from our clients that were inside the cohort. It's also going to be launched on my podcast, which I actually haven't shared with Claire yet, but we're basically going to do like a 10 to 15 minute podcast episode of all of their outcomes and their achievements. So it will be very succinct, but if this is something that piques your interest, you may want to check out one or both. Um, and they will be posted to both of our pages. So if you have any issues accessing it, just message Claire and I. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's really exciting. I feel like, yeah, having the different formats is just so helpful. We don't know, like everyone just listens and consumes in different ways. And I feel like if you have been interested or even if you're just like, what even is this? That would definitely be a really good thing to check out either version, the content posted here or the recordings on your podcast, because we were both listening this week. Now we're like putting it together and everything. Oh my gosh. If you've been on any of these lives, you know how much we get excited when we hear the changes that were made from the last cohort. And I think just listening to that feedback that they shared with us on our last call, it was like, I know for me, I was, I was like beaming, re-listening to it. Just, it, it makes me so happy because they actually made really genuine, massive changes to find a way of working their business that just feels so much more aligned. Yeah, totally. It's honestly night and day. And I think one thing that we don't talk a lot about on these lives, but even if your business is in a lull, like a lot of our clients that were in this container at that time, they were feeling a bit of a dip and that's very normal, but this is the perfect time to actually implement a lot of these strategies before you get back into a launch period come this fall. Um, it's actually like a great timing right before the holiday rush as well. And in my own business, as I've gone through ebbs and flows, you know, I won't lie. It's not always pretty, right? We have to like let ourselves be humans and be emotional. But the best thing about the human design is that most of the time you're able to like move forward with it a lot faster because you have these systems set up that already reallocate your energy accordingly. For sure. I know I was reflecting on before we like this morning I was like oh what what would be helpful for people to hear if they were interested like thinking of this live today and obviously we talk a lot on these about how we are teaching people these very tangible things like I'm teaching them the human design side so they can learn the specifics at the foundational level of course but around their unique energetics. And then you're applying your intuitive approach to marketing and you're helping them come up with a very aligned strategy based on that information. But I think most importantly, what maybe we don't talk about enough is the byproduct of approaching their business in this way and understanding themselves at that level, at that energetic level is that really you're coming out out of this cohort, you're coming out of this container with a strengthened connection to your own energy, to your own inner wisdom. And 
I think like the next level of that really is that you don't even just have this strength and connection and understanding of how your intuitive wisdom speaks to you. It's that you trust it more. You're learning how to really develop this trust in it. Because I think at the end of the day, we can give you these strategies and it's a framework to support you in your business. But the point is that you know how to then apply these skills moving forward as you evolve and as your business evolves. Oh, did I do that? Those bubbles always crack me up. Yes, I couldn't agree more with what you said. It's really able to be built upon like after the cohort's even over and watching a lot of our clients that were inside this container grow even since then, which has only been like a few months. It's really night and day to like watch how they engage or create or even on the back end, if we know them personally, they're sharing different financial standpoints that they've made and things that have totally shifted um, or honestly just accepting like sometimes in business, if we're pushing and pulling in my own experience, pulling all the strings isn't really always what needs to be done intuitively so it also allows you to take a step back reallocate your time and really get it strategic before you move forward for sure i think if you do listen to the feedback from the last round that we're going to share next week you'll hear it in a lot of what they're sharing that exact thing that you just said it's part of understanding your process in business is not only finding the path of least resistance and finding the best way to do things that's going to support your energy and, and get the results you're looking for, but it's also recognizing where you've potentially been blocking yourself as well and being really honest with yourself. And I think one of everyone's favorite kind of takeaways that the manifester that was in here last time she shared um, was I used to do it this way and now I do it this way. That was like one of her overarching takeaways that she just, she was using as she reframed this process. Like now I understand why certain things are coming up when I keep running into roadblocks in my business. And it's not negating the fact that that is, you know, a reflexive response and it's not pretending and gaslighting yourself into thinking that like, oh, this isn't actually happening and basically affirmationing your way into a new way of doing business. I think this is a really healthy way of thinking of it where it's like by saying I used to do it this way, you're acknowledging that you did used to do it that way. And that wasn't best for you. It wasn't best for your business. It wasn't best for your clients. So instead of doing it that way again, I'm now choosing to do it a different way. It's awesome. It's like really amazing to see how quickly the shifts happen. And I feel like this is frequently what we say on our lives, but honestly, it happens overnight. Like once you build this intuitive wisdom that you were explaining this connection to yourself, it becomes much easier to implement over time. And then you will be able to feel more connected to your business and honestly, overall, like more connected to yourself because a lot of us business owners, the business comes first. Like, let's be honest. We are normally on the back burner, especially after the kids, the husband, right? The dog, the wife, the girlfriend, whatever it may be. That is how crazy it can get. So if you are putting yourself on the back burner, something like this cohort is going to show you, okay, where do I fit into the puzzle and what actually needs to happen in order for my business to flourish, but also like having me flourish because honestly, energetics wise, like you have to be at a different vibration, right? To call in more abundance, whether that's financial abundance, time abundance, whatever you may be looking for. We have to raise that vibration first so that you are open to receiving it. It's kind of like when you think about it, if you're in a dip with a business, I have a few clients that go through these waves and I see it happen. It's difficult to see the solution, right? We've all been there. I myself this week, right? It's all about acceptance of that moment and looking at yourself and saying, okay, right now I don't see the solution, 
tomorrow, the day after, maybe an hour from now, I will be able to find it because I trust myself. 100%. I love that you bring that up because yeah, that's, that's a very real aspect of being an entrepreneur. And again, it goes kind of back to like the affirmation in your way out. It's very similar. Like you don't want to pretend that that's not happening. You don't want to glaze over it. You don't want to force through it, push past it. That's a big part of learning how to work with your, your energetics within your business. And I think Caitlin, what you're bringing to the table is teaching people how to really put a marketing process in place and really just a business process in place that's going to be able to support them in those plateaus, in those lulls, and also in the peaks. And I, I think it also goes back to just exactly what you were mentioning too around your intuition, your inner wisdom. And for me, I think like an aha moment that I had as I was re-listening to the feedback from last round was like hearing one of them talking about uh, a way that their intuition was speaking to them around signs that weren't so fun. It was like having a bodily reaction to something like she got hives. And, and I think a lot of the time when we're like talking about connect to your intuition, like is that cardinal trying to tell you a message? Is that butterfly? You saw six butterflies on your walk yesterday. Like, are you on, in a transformational period? I think those are very real, but a part of this as well is recognizing that like your intuition talks to you in a lot of different ways. And that was one of her aha moments was retrospectively piecing together some of the ways that hers was screaming at her last year when she was pouring so much energy into her business and too much was going on in her personal life that it wasn't serving her to do that. And her body straight up flared up and forced her to st take a step back from her business for a temporary period so she could deal with her actual personal energetics. So I think that's, again, that kind of goes back to what I just said in the very beginning where it's like, the point of this, yes, is to help you learn human design, help you learn marketing. But like the bigger point of this is really to help you understand yourself better, trust yourself better and deepen your connection with your intuition so that even as the world of marketing and your business changes over time, you'll still know how to really operate in alignment with yourself and what's going to feel best for you and work for your clients as well. Absolutely. Like, I think you just hit the nail on the head with that explanation too, because really what can happen is if we don't associate the authenticness of ourselves with the brand, we will convert little to nothing off of this platform specifically, you know, like people can see right through this perfect polished example of marketing, right? And it's not real. <laughs> like Nobody wants to work with someone that's not real, that's not saying things like Claire and I are saying that we've experienced this, that we've gone through hardships, that we understand where you're at in business and we're really like speaking truth into that. We're not just saying that we kind of get it. We also run businesses. So we understand how it ebbs and flows. And throughout this entire intuitive connection, as you mentioned, it allows the ebbs and flows to move forward faster. I'm sure a lot of you that are watching could think at a time in your business, right? Where you're like the bathroom floor moment is what I love to call it, where you're just dying out here like is anyone listening like what's happening you know and we've all been there as well but instead you let yourself feel the emotion like claire mentioned and then you pull yourself back out of it right you get back out there you realize that your marketing can work on a wash and repeat for you it does not need to be super micromanaged when it comes to your marketing either it doesn't need to be super polished all you need to do is take that action in order to grow your company. The more money you make, the more you can expand in your business. And one thing that a coach actually, I was just on a call with, she was telling me, which I think is a really nice um, aha moment, right? Is that you should always be lead genning. And not all of us are doing that. A lot of my content recently has been about consistency, which is actually an old conversation that social media managers used to talk about. But really in modern day society, 
business owners don't want to put in the work, right? That it takes actually lead gen every day. If you are a part of the 1%, your business will make it. We are examples of that. So I can help you come up with a pattern of marketing that does feel good. Maybe it's not every day. Maybe it's three days a week, right? We work with your energy so that you're still getting out there. And we also teach you different points of marketing that will perpetuate into the future so that you're not recreating the wheel every single day. Yeah, which I think anytime we're talking about energetics and honoring that, regardless of what your human design is, that's going to matter. The way it's going to look and what you're going to help them put together is going to be different based on their human design. But like, ultimately, every single person needs to be taking that into account if they actually want a sustainable business model, which I think you and I can totally speak to. It's like, that's probably the thing that I would say ruins most businesses businesses, for lack of a better word, small businesses, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs in their first couple of years of business is not having something sustainable built out, whether it's their marketing strategy, whether it's the way that they're actually offering their services to people. Um, there's a lot of different aspects that I think is important to know. Like you can bring those things to the table in here, because again, the point of this is to really just look at what feels like a sticking point. Like this is where I feel the most stuck in my business. I think a lot of it is going to be adding context. So you understand your energy and you understand maybe why that approach or that, that model, that setup, that strategy is, is making you feel that way. But I think another part is really looking at, okay, do we really need to blow it up or is it something that can be a minor tweak and refined? to just actually make this work for you because there's probably a reason that you started doing it this way in the first place. That's such a good point. I think a lot of our clients in our last cohort were like, I'm done. I'm done with this business. If this doesn't work, right? If this cohort doesn't work for me, I'm absolutely done. I'm calling it a wash. Like they were checked out. They were ready to give up. Like most of us are, okay? This is like real talk. You're going to get real life conversations between Claire and I. We're very honest people. That's why we love working together. Um, and our clients tend to be that way as well. So the more we know, okay, what isn't working, as Claire mentioned, a lot of the times it is just a micro shift in your marketing. And it's going to take little to no energy, maybe even less energy than you've been, been expending because of this connection that Claire is able to explain to you. And then in conjunction with the marketing tactics that I can show you, you may not know anything about, right? We see these platforms evolving every single day. Things like Google, SEO, backend connections, backlinks, all of these terms, not a lot of us know, right? I didn't go to business school. I went to communication school. I went to marketing school. But they didn't even teach any of that in marketing school back when I went to school. They may not even teach it now, right? So we're here to show you how to utilize your energy in the best possible way to create one form of content that can be streamlined across every single platform of where your ideal clients reside um not just like throwing spaghetti at the wall so if any of you listening also have feedback or questions claire and i are just going to keep gabbing away here and sharing our perspectives but we would love to hear from you too um, if you are on live and feel free to drop your questions below, or if you don't know like what human design is, or you're not really sure about your own marketing, feel free to give us some info. Yes, I know. We, we love answering questions live. That's a fun part of this. So feel free. Um, I feel like what I would want to know though, if I was listening to is just what, what does it even look like? Like, I feel like we talk about the, the what's happening and what we're talking about in here but just so that we actually are saying it out loud too in terms of what you're getting from a coaching standpoint um this is going to be a blend of group coaching calls and private one-on-one -on -one sessions so again knowing that you are going to get that customization i think the one-on-one -on -one part of that just know that you do get that um because really that's where a lot of the the key details get kind of nailed down and refined 
um, is on those private coaching sessions to just make sure that you're getting that specific to you attention. So there's three of those over the course of the month, one with me, one with Caitlin, and one combined where it's like a joint coaching session. Um, and there's also the Facebook community as well. Like we have the group where you can just connect with one another in there. I think that's a big thing that happened last time, not necessarily in the Facebook group, but just in general, it's such an intimate group we try to keep it at around two to four people like we want it very intimate so we can give you the amount of attention that you're really needing to be able to make this work and integrate it effectively so the the people that were in here last time our previous clients like they really just i feel like they bonded and they learned so much from each other it's almost like a mini mastermind like it obviously yes me and you were doing the majority of the coaching here but they were definitely learning from each other's experiences as well, which I think is another cool part of this. Such a key point because as well, like what's really cool about human design and Claire could even, like we can do one-off sessions the deeper you all would like to get, right? This cohort, as she mentioned, is just scratching the surface of human design and how it associates with business. But what's really cool that I loved about the cohort is that you can learn about your potential clients by observing the people and even Claire and I inside the cohort. So we all share our design openly. And then the more you would like to dive into it, then you can be like, okay, I'm putting it together that I believe that this client is a projector or a voice open projector. I forget the exact term, right? So they may be wanting to utilize their voice more. This really helped me in my coaching where I realized, okay, all they have to do is basically talk to themselves. <laughs> like there's little to no coaching that I need to do, right? Then there's other clients that don't want to speak at all. And you actually do need to pull and give more ideas and share different types of questions to allow them to feel more comfortable on the call, especially if you're building that trust factor. So this can also help you when it comes to sales as well, right? Because different designs want to be sold to in a different way. And it just kind of opens up this door to this whole other tool that you can start to add to your toolbox and over time collect more and more information working with Claire and I, even outside of our cohort as well, to basically build on your business overall. For sure. I think pretty much every client that I have worked with in this container and outside of it that has the type of business model where they are working with their own clients especially in like a coaching, a therapy, a consulting type of, um, what's the word, business model, it really is such a leg up to be able to have this information, not only about yourself, but to be able to start to recognize some of these kind of key giveaways of what somebody's type might be or what their profile might be or whatever it may be. And like, you don't need to be an expert. I think I want to be abundantly clear on that. You, if you literally just know that your client is a sacral generator, it's like, okay, I know that if I'm a life coach for this person or a business coach for this person or whatever it may be, I know that I really need to make sure that they have a strong connection with their gut responses. Like it can be as simple as that. You don't have to be this expert at human design to be able to really leverage this skill set in a whole different way in your business, which I think, I mean, obviously I'm biased here, but I, I will say people tend to really be interested in this once they dip their toe in it. So if they know their design, it's really going to support you. It might be the decision maker of them working with you versus a different coach if they know that you are familiar and could fold this information and would take their energetics into consideration as you coach them and support them. Absolutely. Like, and even from a marketing standpoint, like, I feel like this is almost like the inside scoop that I'm giving you guys, but like, people feel so seen. Like Claire said, I have seen people hear me say human design, like on a podcast or on another live where like, Again, I've been very open. I have only learned from Claire in this process. 
immediately people are jumping to hear more about themselves and they want to learn more about this intuitive connection. So it's honestly as simple as like asking them for their birth information on your intake form. It doesn't need to be, you know, even discussed if they aren't open for it, right? But at least you go in knowing, okay, this person has a sacral connection. Like Claire said, they're gonna have more of a gut instinct. Okay, maybe if I show them, if I'm an esthetician, right? I'm doing a facial. They're telling me how much they love the aroma of this mask. It's great, I have it out front. I'm gonna sell it to them when we leave the room because they mentioned, right? They opened up the door to this gut reaction, to this instinct of the smell. Maybe I open up the mask as I'm selling it to them and I have them smell it again, right? All of these tasks and ways of selling in an intuitive way where the client's already asking for it. It allows you to basically connect with your own intuition and theirs on the back end to provide them with exactly what they're looking for, which has been something that's been really eye-opening for me learning in this process as well. Definitely. I love that you bring that up because yeah, I think there's like so many ways that you can apply this if you care to in your business. And obviously, if you have questions around that, like that's what we love talking about if you were in this coaching container. Um, and, and I feel like too, it's especially supportive when you have those people who just, who did just learn their design. I tend to work with a lot of manifestors and a lot of projectors, which are in the minority of the energetic population. And because of that, I think a lot of them are very specifically seeking whatever angle of support they want that support to be educated at least on some level in human design just understand the language of it because being in the minority energetically means that you're not going to operate like the majority energetically and so i think what i tend to find is those types of clients they're very exhausted trying to apply all of these strategies that are proven and working for a lot of other people because they just aren't designed to work with them. And so I think that's the kind of thing where even if you don't know a ton about it, if you just know their strategy and their type, like, oh, okay, like you're a manifester, you're literally here to create change. You're the idea person. Like you're not here to have someone tell you what to do, but there is a very specific way for them to approach kind of planting those seeds of ideas around in their industry because it's not going to be received perfectly if they don't approach it in the right way so anyway we could go deep down that rabbit hole but just to give you an idea i think that's like a, a really beneficial byproduct of what can also come out of this as well oh my gosh i love that description thank you so much claire i'm gonna wrap us up here because we've been talking for 30 minutes which literally felt like five <laughs> So if you've made it to the end, thank you all so much for listening. Please message us. We do still have a few spots open, um, maybe like two or three. But again, we're keeping this very condensed and we do have a lot of interest, I'll be honest. So definitely message us. We'll get you guys in. Check out those videos next week if you're still on the fence. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much, Claire. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye.